Hello, and welcome to my first voiced over time lapse. Today I'm doing a piece for one of my online D&D groups in preparation for us to start recording our sessions and putting them on YouTube. This is mostly for our own fun and benefit, as having record of this can be useful, but if anyone out there is interested in following along, we'll be starting this next weekend on our new channel, Dice Versa. I'll be using this video to introduce the campaign and our characters. Our campaign is our own storyline, not from any pre-made adventure, and is set in a world of high magic. Our home country, Panea, has long been controlled by druids, largely through their means of ensuring rich and bountiful harvests with the plant growth spell. However, because of the way magic is drawn in this world, often across the boundaries of planes, the frequent use of this magic does sometimes lead to leaks between the planes. Damaging encounters have led to a pronounced dislike of fey and elemental beings. Recently, a powerful extraplanar group has risen to prominence, one known as the Zodiacs. They have begun an attack on the material plane. The capital city, Peduncle, has already been destroyed, though an evacuation was carried out successfully due to prior warning, and there have been other rumblings of war through attacks on other prominent cities and people. On top of that, the ties between the planes have grown volatile, with teleportation magic spontaneously opening unintended portals. Our group has been pointed towards these zodiacs in a great quest to end this war before it destroys all the planes. First, meet Ashta Lightwell, Asimar, Horizon Walker Ranger. Once a guard for hire, he lost his first squad to an ambush by a water elemental, which he barely escaped. Blaming himself for leaving the others to die, he entered a dark period, which was eventually broken by the arrival of a friend, a pixie named Rayla, who hides in his shirt pocket to keep her existence a secret. She was sent to him by a powerful individual who felt Ashta's distress due to a bond from past lives, and has helped and guided him since. He met the rest of the current party in a job given to them by the druids, to clear out an abandoned wizard's tower infested with hostile fe fey. Though his severe drive and focus, and apparent distrust of fey and elemental beings due to their invasions, did lead to a rocky start, he has since grown closer to the group. As for the ghost pictured here, that is Essence, a powerful weapon with a soul bound to it, and a terrible caveat. Anyone who dies while holding said weapon will have their soul replace the current one. Right now, she's the ghost of a wizard apprentice who died hundreds of years ago, when the druids took control of the nation from the wizards who kept it before. Second, we have Xenia Talcent, Elf, Circle of Dreams Druid. As a Blessed of Corallon, Xenia can choose day by day whether to present as male, female, or an androgynous mix of their choice. Pictured here is their more masculine form. We typically use they or them to refer to them, but sometimes a he or a she will slip out of instead. It's Xenia, whichever pronoun is used. Xenia grew up in Lucerne, one of the northern cities, as the middle child in an adopted family of elves. They studied druidic magic outside of the main government, though they are now officially certified after a visit back home. Once, Xenia favored a giant spider form for combat wild shape, but an encounter with the goddess Lol, in which she gave Xenia the choice of continuing to use that form in exchange for service, one dependent upon the death of a party member that Xenia had sworn to protect, has locked that form away from them. 
now the promise of a future encounter with Lolf, while on far less benign terms, is a looming possibility due to their refusal to murder a friend. Third, meet Esther Macken, Fire Genasi, Evocation Wizard. Motherly almost to a fault, Esther comes from a nomadic tribe of Genasi in the southern desert. She left after losing her child, wandering northward, and fell in with the rest of the group party on the tower job. She has since turned her mothering instincts on the group, as well as onto the injured gold dragon wormling she very recently managed to find in the wilderness on an extremely unlikely and narratively ironic encounter. So far, Esther is the only party member to have died. Before this event, she was a psionic, but she came out of the revival a wizard instead. In between, she dreamt of a being, one which modified her memories so that she could not recall its face, or voice, or any other facet of identity being came and took her psionic abilities. The party has since learned a little more of this being and the way it collects such powers from people, as well as a suggestion that it either is a zodiac or else is allied with them and their interests. I'll take a moment here to mention Caius, our human, very purple, wrestling-themed open-hand monk. Caius was with us for some time, but the player had some scheduling troubles after a while, which stretched out over months, so it's been a significant time since we've had him in the group proper. Maybe he'll return on a more regular basis one day, though. Caius is a quirky entertainment fighter who often tries to start fight clubs and taverns and inns and therefore butts heads with, and once got a concussion from, Ashta. Enchanted hand wraps give him literal fists of fire, and an inside joke in the group chat has developed into a penchant for eating and drinking things not meant for consumption. Mostly soap. It started with the suggestion he'd do so for a bit, and then it snowballed. Last, there is Lady Rosalind Alba Salvatore, human, packed of the chain warlock with an arch baby. Rosalind is the only one of the group pictured here who was not sent to clear the tower. Instead, she was trapped in it. The only daughter of the Duke of Anther, Rosalind and her usual guard were ambushed by Meanlocks not too far from the Resilian Forest. She ran to the tower for safety and hid from the Fae inside and out. Unsure whether a rescue would come, when she met a powerful presence in a dream she was quick to demand safe passage, and, failing that, was quick to accept power to create passage for herself instead. When the group arrived, she joined them, along with her pseudo-dragon familiar, Thorn, and helped them in their mission. Upon returning to Anther, her father offered the others the task of acting as her guards and keeping her safe as she traveled the country, learning what she could of her magic, the source of which she typically tries to keep quiet, because while fey warlocks are not illegal, some may frown upon them. The goddess Lolth has already demanded her death as she is fey touched both by her pact and by the truth of her parentage which she recently discovered. The duke adopted her after his own wife and child died, and though she is human, there is fey blood in her. So, this was the group for our Elemental campaign. We run on Saturday nights, and I plan on having the recordings on YouTube on Sundays. If you'd like to listen to our shenanigans, you're welcome to check us out. Cheers, and thanks for watching.